Let's say we're near the top of West A, as you can see on your screen, the starting lineups, Paul, John, Zarif, Chimney, and Nabisi. Uh, this was a really, really good team. They did not get the win over Texas Tech Red, who was the top team in their division. However, cemented uh, cemented themselves as the second best team in the group. Yeah, uh, Chimney Chimney, I felt like had a pretty solid performance against uh, Texas A&M Maroon. I think they were doing very, very good. Uh, the people to watch for me, like you mentioned, Chimney Chimney, Paul in the top lane, and especially against their opponents, who I think have two very star-studded laners that have been playing in and out of the competitive scene, have played in Tier 3, have played in those leagues. We've got UHSP Esports here. We've got Johnny Rockets, James Everott, Sir Zipri, and Regis in the bottom lane. And Johnny Rockets and Zipri, again, two individuals, the bottom laner and the top laner, have very much impressed me since they debuted way back then. I want to say like 2022, and they've only continued to get better. And I think regardless of where you see people going, whether it's Zipri, Johnny Rockets, whoever, I think they've got some really consistent good players here as we head into the draft. We've got the Comets on the blue side, UHSP on the red side, and we are on, I believe, the latest patch here, 14.6. Azir is still disabled, I believe, uh, so that hasn't been fixed, so that mid laner is going to be removed from the, the game and from our competitive series here. But is there anything of note that you think could pop up in this new patch in this series? Mm. I'm not really sure, man. Like, you know, there's a couple of changes that I was like, oh, this is really, really good. I'm really happy about that. But realistically, I feel like these teams are just going to go with some of the tried and true picks. You know, Volibear yep. was a champion terrorizing on 14.5. Like, he's still really still strong. Yeah, coming yeah. into 14.6, right? So uh, I personally don't see why uh, they would deviate from what's been going on. But maybe we will see a pocket pick or two come out. Yeah, I think the smolder nerfs that came in, not that impactful. I was hoping to get, I'm hoping for him to get hit with harder nerfs, but I think they kind of put him in a spot where they capped his execution damage. Maybe that's the the tap that he needed to kind of put him into place because it always feels like the other scaling champions in the game scale with gold, scale with other things. Smolder is the one that scales with stacks, and once he gets to that point, it feels like it's a nuclear arms race to like shut him down, end the game before he hits 225. Once that happens, the game warps and teams can come back here. As we see three mid lane bans from the Comets, putting heavy respect onto Evrot's name here. When you look on the UHSP side, a little bit of a mixed bag of, of, of bans here. They threw an AD carry, a jungler, a flex pick. Uh, the Comets really want to keep Zarif comfortable and don't want to give Evrot any of his power picks that should open up UHSP, their other laners, to get some of their favorite stuff. Yeah, you mentioned shutting down. Well, they're trying to shut down Everot in the draft phase. And, I mean, this guy is really, really fantastic. Currently sitting at Challenger, 800 LP. Like, this guy this guy's legitimate, right? He just played a game with Prince uh, before, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, the, the game today, right? So, uh, this guy is definitely ready and raring to go. So, you are going to see the first pick, Maokai, come out. And an interesting response of first pick, Caitlyn. It uh, can be a little dangerous, but there is that Volibear that I so astutely mentioned earlier. Yeah, Caitlyn, cool champion. I think it's very good at shutting down these late game kind of AD carries that we've seen. There's two routes you can go. You can either partake in the arms race and say, I'm going to pick Kogma for a smolder. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Or you can just look to smash the other laner in completely, right? If they pick something scaling with a Caitlyn, with the Lucian. I like this because it opens up to like Caitlyn Lux. This Maokai, though, for the Comets can be flexed into three different roles. As did you see the Orn being locked in? Still can be flexed into support, into jungle. And I think the Comets will, will want to keep that up until they see a little bit more of UHSP's draft. The Orn being locked in, though, for the Comets, this just screams, I don't want to fight you. I just want to scale until the end of time. What do you mean, bro? His level one, he got buffed by two seconds. He, <laughs> let's go. This is lane bully or no, no, I'm just, I, no, I'm, I'm just, I'm just getting out there. No, no, no. This is a really nice setup. One of the best setups. Whenever you're going to pick a jinx and you're like, yeah, you also have an Orn and a Maokai on your team. Your mouth is watering. You're like, I want to make it to late game. I'm going to get an Orn item. Oh my God. They're all going to be rooted. Oh man. I'm in heaven. Yeah, agreed here. And when that Orn gets locked in, I think UHSP does a very good job. The Braum opened up. And Caitlyn Braum's not even like a half bad lane, right? If you can get the Winter's Bite on, you can start pelting away with the autos. You have the ability to block the Orn horn. It is, becomes a game of chicken for both the Orn and the Braum. It's like, how long can I hold my shield and how long are you going to hold your hold your ulti here? As we do get more bands coming in, Comets are taking no chances at all. 
Evra is going to have to go deep in the bag. He's going to break the piggy bank, look into the couch. He's got to find some champions dug deep into the cushions because right now these are five mid lane bans for him. Maybe he pulls out one of the old champions out from under the fridge. You know, when you, you drop something, you just <laughs> kick it under the fridge by mistake. Oopsie day, by mistake, I should say, you know. Mistake. Uh, so we'll see what the options are. We are going to see Olaf get locked in here. And oh my God. Love this. This UHSP team is going to be absolutely nuts. The Eutectics have a really nice draft going on here. Uh, a just really burly team. Uh, again, you know, much like the Jinx having the Orn and the Maokai, if you're a Caitlyn and you have this sort of team, you are also foaming at the mouth, right? You are like, my early game is so much better. We're going to do some crazy stuff. I love the Olaf too, because it could you can just power through all the CC, that is the Orn, the Maokai, stuff like that. I was hoping that maybe UHSP would pick up the Karma here if they are going to go for that Olaf. Your favorite. Right? A very skirmish heavy. I love that champion. I think it's busted. Same. Not having it banned, even though it got tapped down quite a bit here, is surprising. I love the skirmish comp that UHSP had. Oriana being slotted in. That's everyone's mid laner, right? Any mid laner worth their weight in gold can play that champion. You have to play it. Into the Karma should be a fine matchup. You've got solid ball delivery systems with the Olaf, with the Volley Bear. I'm liking UHSP's composition here. It's a lot more early game focused. You can play for the early dragons, play for the early grubs, and you have, just have to kind of outvalue Comets in the early game to accelerate and, and kind of put them in a position where they're not comfortable to fight in. Kindred, Orn, Jinx, these guys aren't going to fight you at 12 minutes. Yeah, and this is something that is really interesting that I'm really excited about is you mentioned the mid lane, right? This Oriana, Oriana has quite a bit more pushing power than Karma. Karma's Q doesn't necessarily play well with minion waves sometimes. You know, sometimes you're like, oh, you know, I've lined it all up to hit five of them and it clips one minion and all of a sudden... Uh, you lose out on some of your pushing power. So that's going to be something to watch out for. His chimney is already forced to burn Ghost. And remember what the strategy that Maroon pulled out against uh, the Comets, right? They went after oh. Chimney Chimney, who was the big carry for the Comets. They shut him down in game one. And, you know, this is a composition that might not be super locked down, right? Can certainly present some problems and make his life a living hell and run away. But... Running that ghost early, They're, they certainly know who the target is. Yeah, shutting down Chimney Jimney is the move here. I think all eyes for me are on Evrod, are on Zep. This Evrod's, mm -hmm. in theory, on his sixth best champion, right? If you count the Annie, maybe seventh best as well. I mean, this guy is on the Oriana. I'm looking for him to make moves with James specifically on this Volley Bear. The mid 2v2, the mid, the mid game skirmishes when they hit level six. I think these two have to be firing on all cylinders for this UNHS, UN, UHSP squad to actually kind of come out with the win here. Zipri's in a fine lane. He's got the Olaf. He's in top lane. And they're just going to invade Kindred here. I love this. You've got early game power. Why not use it? Oh, wow. He's not going to even go for the Wolves there. He's just going to move all the way down to the red buff. So I really love what's coming out here from the Eutectics. Very, as you mentioned, aggressive. So we'll have to see how that alters uh, John's pathing, right? This is going to be very difficult, especially on a champion like Kindred. Yeah, uh, you mentioned the pathing. I think they are just going to try to split the jungle vertically best as possible, and that's going to give the Comets bot side priority. But unfortunately for Orn, for, Z for Zarif here, for Paul, they're going to have to deal with Jame being inside their jungle, different gang paths, and giving lane priority to somebody like an Olaf. Oh, you know he's going to abuse that. You know he's going to go ham, especially if there's zero threat of a gank for like three, four minutes, potentially. Yeah, Zepp is going to have a grand old time up here. He's chopping away Elderwood Orn. He kind of looks like a tree, right? You know, he starts <laughs> throwing the axes at the trees, Paul Bunyan style. Yeah, I could not agree more. It's a fitting skid, right? Especially going into the all-off. And look at this. The dive is already coming in. He just has to get this wave shoved in. Zep is trying so hard. And Paul, let's see if he commits to actually try to clear this or if he's just going to kind of bite the bullet, eat the dive. He knows it's coming. Jim pulling the wave there, allowing the rest of the wave to get in. Paul now hitting level three. Big double knock up there. Turret is going to try to do what it can. Paul flashes away. Jame has to flash as well. It's a 1v1. Oh. Zep misses the axe, but he'll be able to pick up first blood anyway. Yep, and that's what vertical jungling can do, and that's the power of Volibear. You thought he could only dive you at six? No, 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 no. He is 
very capable of diving at level two, level three, especially when you take these aggressive trades that Paul did into Olaf. Zep was forcing those, but now this is the this is the byproduct. Good sidestep there from the Caitlyn. Should be able to just walk it out just fine. Dr. Persuasion putting up the big Braum shield. You mentioned how that can stop a lot of things from occurring and uh, can deter bot lane ganks as well. Especially into the Kindred, right? Like, that's that's rough. The impact of the Volley Bear, right? Level 3 gank and the Kindred level 3 gank is very, very different. Yeah, you're going to be able to get the mark. Uh -oh. Yeah, you'll be able to split the jungle. Wait a minute. Here we go. Jame is here in the area. Rehis still alive, just hanging out. Flashes is forced here. As it's a good response there from Jame. Yeah, I like that. Jame immediately takes the reset after that dive. Gets back onto the map, buys the longsword. He hasn't cleared a lot of his jungle, so he's going to be a little bit behind. But you look at it right now, Johnny is actually going to be down a couple camps here, right? Like, he lost one quadrant of his jungle. James still has his blue side and his red side available. As long as these guys are content on farming for a little bit, James is going to be super far ahead of Kindred and will be able to kind of duel around the map, especially with this kind of mid-game skirmish comp that the Eutectics have, right? With the Orianna, with the Olaf. They essentially have priority on this top side whenever they need. Yeah, and James getting Zep ahead, it's going to cause problems for Paul because Zep didn't burn any summoners in that top lane dive. Nope. He still has Ghost, he still has Flash, and, you know, we know from the last time we saw them that Paul was a pretty strong point of the comments here. Even on tankier champions, he could perform. This is certainly going to be something very scary. It's going to put a lot of pressure on the chimney. And, yeah, Zep is just allowed to roam and go where he pleases. He's cosplaying <laughs> Dr. Mundo, actually, as he's looking to... He takes away a wolf, so that's already worth it. Zarif looking to help out his kindred, but Jame lying in wait. Gonna land the stun. They're gonna turn it on Zarif. His is super low. Get some shielding. He's got a lot of attack speed. Everot's gonna be able to get the kill, and John is gonna have to try to cut it out, but this kindred doesn't have many places to go. Able to hop over the wall. Jame trying to chase him down. Get him. Gets the speed up from Everot under the turret, and it's another kill for the Eutectics. You don't want to scrap with this composition, Yanni. I said it before. It's an Olaf. It's a Volley Bear. It's an Oriana. You cannot skirmish against them. You just are not built that way. And you saw the Comets heavily lose out on that. Like, it was so rough for them. And this Kindred is just not having a good time. She's been forced out of her jungle twice down that top side. And Jame is going to get everything. And he's going to die on the mark. I won't be surprised if they try to play for these grubs here as well. The world is James Oyster right it's now. It's Jame time, bro. <laughs> I don't know. I hope you get the reference, man. I, I know it's game? not our game. I know yeah. it's not our game, but it's Jame time indeed here on Summoner's Rift. Six minutes in, already full kill participation. And, you know, this makes Chimney's life a lot harder too, right? Like, you don't want to see a fed Volley Bear or, uh, or a fed Olaf, no matter what AD carry you are especially if you have these two guys just running at you mock speed, right? It is disgusting. You can't really do anything about it. You can't CC the Olaf. The Volley Bear has multiple different ways to kind of get around the CC, whether it's using the invulnerability from the ultimate, having the flash up. I mean, this guy just lives super long here. He's going to go Sundered Sky. As we do see some attention down into that bot lane. Grub's being taken. We talked about it. Jame has full priority. He can kind of take it when he pleases. And I love the change, by the way, to note. Grubs don't get a shield anymore. So what happens is when you take the first one down, the other the other grubs will recover 30% of their missing HP. So now it's more favorable to focus one grub at a time, and you actually can take it faster. I love the change. I love that they've empowered grubs a little bit more and made it something worthwhile to take. Yep, your favorite. You know, it feels like it's been your favorite yeah. objective. Uh, oh, you yeah. Know, you could have just told me that you hated early Herald back in the day, man. We'd never play around it. As you can see, Zep is just... Dirty farming here. Uh, I can't call it a true proxy if it ain't singed, but it's just behind enemy lines and it's just going to be uncontested the entire time. It's going to be really, fight really annoying. For <laughs> no, bro. Listen, <laughs> I can throw hands, but this guy throws axes. I don't want any part of that. I don't think Johnny or Zarif are going to help out Polly. And unfortunately, Olaf is just kind of left on the island. The consequence of this vertical jungling, though, is that Rage and Persuasion are going to have to play a little bit more passive. I don't love that, especially when you are picking this Caitlyn lane. The typical stuff that comes to mind is that you're farming them under turret, you're getting plates, so on and so forth. Because of this vertical split and because of the heavy focus on uh, the Zep... Zep? Wait, no. what, just, what just happens? I don't just know died. what just happened up there. 
I know some training is going on down here. Rehus, level six. Got the stun. Ace in the hole. Going to land, but not going to kill. No extra crit rate. No crit rate. No real AD. How She's got a bronze blade and a cold. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry uh, yeah, to I, I'm a, like, how do we... No, no, no. I think Zep just got his recall canceled. Took a turret shot. Was afraid of the roam. And then just kind of, unfortunately, ran out of mana. That's the dirty thing about proxying his Jame. Flash he for ran. flash. He... He... That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, but now they're going to force Chimney off of this wave oh, here. There's a lot going on here, and it's going to be John who is going oh. to die. Evra was able to pick up a kill in the mid lane as well. It's just disaster on the rift for the Comets. Yeah, the Eutectics came in with a plan, right? And they're executing it near flawlessly. I will excuse Zep for that. I know he tried to execute onto that turret. Didn't realize Paul could just ult him and kill him. But uh, you know what? Other than that... They've been playing some damn good League of Legends, right? They use the map split to their advantage. They skirmish early. They've been doing a damn good job denying Johnny his own jungle and keeping this guy down. This scaling composition, who you thought would be online maybe 28, 29 minutes in, you've delayed them to at minimum 35, even 36 minutes into the game because of the damage that's been done to both Johnny and Paul. Does Kendra even have any stacks right now? Like, I think gotta two. have at least one or two, right? I haven't quite seen. So if we get a spotlight or somebody in here oh about that God. one, one stack, and look where the other stack is right now. It's on the opposing chickens. No way in hell you're gonna try to cross that river at this point in time. No, not at all. You're never gonna be able to get a real stack just leave that on the enemy side. Yeah, you just you you can, or you can just kind of take it and force it to respawn on your side. She just has to get lucky, right? She has to hope that it's on a on a on a scuttle crab. She got to hope it's somewhere where the team isn't. But you don't have to trade objectives for for these. It's gonna be really really difficult. Persuasion though. Good ultimate there. Persuasion not gonna take a whole lot of damage. Kindred oh, is on whoa. the way. The BC though, on the other hand, is taking Block a whole lot. Rehus forced the flash away. Persuasion also low and. Super Mega Death Rocket actually ends up getting a kill there, and Chimney Chimney is going super deep and knows it's got to be his time to get the job done. Ah! Huh? 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 Hello? Kindred ult makes you invulnerable. I mean, still a good play. 2 1 overall gets the static shiv. Uh, but out. realistically, Persuasion should be blocking the Maokai ult, right? The support should be dying for the AD carry. Yeah, not not the other way around. And I like the aggressiveness out of Chimney Chimney. That was just, I feel like that was just a really, really hard scenario that he got put in there. Unfortunately, going to go down for it as Kindred no is now forced to run away. Can't get anything done. And guess who's pinching? It's Oriana on the way. Kindred's going to go over the wall. If you don't get stunned first, blown up, and it's a third kill for Everon. So he gets oh, Everon might go for another one. Yeah, a little bit of a tiff with Zarif here. Shockwave lands. Does he have the QW available? And the BC is here. QW does not land. But oh. Evrock gets knocked away. He's burning away. He flashes away. He shields himself. Slows the BC. And Evrot is out of there. You can oh, wait, six Evrot's ban him. Whoa! Whoa! Nabisi flashes forward, gets the kill. Super Mega Death Rocket does a little bit of damage. Is Zarif trying to kite this out? Jame is in the area. Nobody getting slowed up from the Winter's Bite means that nothing more for the Eutectics to pick up. Yeah, just a little bit of a disjointed fight, right? Evrot not on the same page as his two tanks here, and they're not really able to do much. Uh, Rage actually... Rage is actually popped Ghost. I'm not sure why. I don't know if he was, like, looking for a play or if he felt like he was in danger there. I talked about the Eutectics playing a clean game so far. Ever since then, the Cassacres has come in, and they've been just a little sloppy, right? Their bot lane fights, their mid lane skirmishes, they haven't been really been on the same page, which is kind of uh, unfortunate. Although we do see them, they do have six grubs. They were able to pick that up earlier on, and regardless, they still have control of the game. They're still comfortably 3,000 gold ahead at the 12 and a half minute mark. This is where the comics kind of have to buckle down, not lose too much more gold here. If you want the scaling composition to kind of win you the game and get you to that late game stage, I don't think you can bleed an ounce more of gold. Yeah, you just need to dig your heels in and not give up too much more. Giving up one dragon here is going to be totally fine, right? It's like, all right, you know, we got our one dragon, no big deal. The hex gates are going to make life a little bit harder on them because that means that the Eutectics get on the map faster. More opportunities for them to make plays. Speaking of, Shockwave here in the mid lane, Zarif taking so much damage, Evrot unable to finish him off. 
I mean, I love how Everett's just letting it rip on the shockwave, right? Oh, yeah. All too many times you'll see Oriana just like be super conservative with it, just only use me. it when it's a big man. Yeah, just like. Just at just, me, bro. <laughs> I'm not, no, I'm not adding you. It's just I'm just saying, Everett will have to pay the price though. Oh, Johnny, there is no price to be paid. If the price is a one for one, I'm sure he will gladly take that. Did that kindred mark get off on the Oriana or no? It doesn't look like. Uh, it. I don't think so. It was a little too late. So kindred, I still believe Oof. at that one mark. Oh yeah, my god, one mark, thirteen and a half minutes in. Yeah, you don't, you don't like yourself. You don't like this game, right? But just to be, you know, clear. Kindred doesn't really become a champion until she hits that four mark status where she gets the in increased attack range, where she gets a little bit more damage, right? She's able to do things on the map. If she's stuck at one, two, or three for the remainder of this game, she just can't really function in these team fights. You don't really get the full power of the Kindred here. And I'm just going to say, once again, kudos to Eutectics. Their top side has been keeping Johnny down. Jame and Zep have just been running amok in this guy's jungle. Yeah, it's been really, really tough. And do you expect anything less uh, from a team <laughs> that, you know, had a pretty decent win rate in their C-Law group? They took three losses in Group A to Ole Miss, Fisher, and U Ottawa, which are very strong teams. But you grab four other wins in your C-Law group, you're, you're looking pretty good. You're at least a fairly average team. And the Comets, you know, this roster, this iteration of the Comets can't exactly say the same. Yeah, it is an uphill battle for the Comets right now. I mean, they five banned Evrod in the mid lane, right? Like, if you have to do that, that frees up Zep for his Olaf, that frees up Jane for the Volley Bear. And you can see when the load is on the other potential players to carry this and to, to kind of use their power, use the draft resources given to them, they're more than performing. Zarif is in trouble. Zarif is blown up. <laughs> Everot's not going to have the shockwave to be able to try to get themselves out of the situation as John is going to be able to pick them up, pick up another mark. Backside of the fight, it's Zep who's forced away, but it is Jame looking to make things happen. Call the Forge God ready to come in, and it's going to hit the one CCMU member who's going to chop down the cherry tree. Super Mega Death Rocket lands on a Jame. Jame goes back in trying to land the stun, Whoa. doesn't get the shield in time as Paul takes him out. Zep? Oh my. That was a tree to flash. That was I love that. really, really smart out of Zep. But you should be okay. Seats. You should, should be okay. Yeah. Let's... Johnny might want to dive with the Kindred no. ultimate here. Yeah, it, it could happen. But you Johnny, should. wait a minute. I like that. I like that from Zep. Recalling right before the turret. Have no clue where he is at the moment. And so Johnny not able to dive here. Look at the bottom lane, though. First turret taken down here. Caitlyn doing Caitlyn things. Finally, the ghost was popped. I believe Chimney counter goes to just to get away. And we talked about Comics not bleeding any more gold. At the 12 minute mark, they were down 3,000. You take a peek now, it's four and a half. It's slowly but surely ballooning in the favor of the Eutectics. And I feel like Comics are just losing grip of this game ever so slowly. Just a little bit. Zarif might be in a little bit of trouble here. The BC nope. is here to try to help oh. out. Did not get the stun proc off, which means the BC gets to go in. But Everot is on the way and has Shockwave available. And the Comets realize this and get the heck out of Dodge. But Jame is not done yet. Stun on into BC. Looking for a little bit more. Everot again. That Shockwave available. They go on to Jame. Jame getting lower and lower. Gets the shield up there. And he will fall Jame? to the Kindred. As Dr. Persuasion is up next. He's forced to flash over the Chompers. Ooh, nice two-man shockwave. shockwave lands. Great ultimate there from Kindred. Rehiss in a little bit of trouble trying to front line. Getting very low. Solo Rehiss. still alive for right now. The blocks. Dr. Persuasion, the offensive lineman, keeping him alive. Here come the roots out of Malkai. Flash forced out of the Oriana. The BC's been slowed. Whoa. Has him not going to land. And finally, the fight ends. A, a, a dirty one for one overall, right? James dies super early. The fight keeps going. Johnny is taken out here. But like you mentioned, Persuasion, the MVP of that fight, puts up the brick wall and says, no, 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 you're not going to damage any of my carries. And I love that Regis is just sticking in the pocket, doing as much damage as possible, right? He's not running away. He's not fearing for his life. He's staying there and saying, I'm going to get off as many autos as possible to dissuade Comets from pushing on any further. Dragon comes up. That's going to give Jame and the rest of the Eutectics time to take this. And they'll slowly but surely build towards that Hextech soul. Slowly indeed. Shimmy, there's one thing that I just noticed. Zarif has 81 CS. 
Yeah, my boys having a rough time. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's 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 rough. I mean, listen, Everot. You know, we've we've talked about him at least a little bit, uh, showing every bit of that 800 LP challenger that he is. He's played uh, really fantastically. Got to give him all the plaudits in the world, right? You you throw five bands at him, and and the dude's just like, okay, nah, I'd win. Yeah, clearly, and he's kind of just been flexing on the mid lane, like we said, shockwaving when needed, just keeping this karma as gold starved as possible. I don't think she's hit the malignant's power spike yet. And typically you can get that before laning phase is over, right? Typically you'll have your first item. She's just been starved of gold, has not been allowed to play the game. And so you can't get the potential skirmish power with this karma, with the mantras, with the malignants that you would normally get. And that just gives the eutectics more time to fight you, more time to 3v3, more time to 4v4 you. I think the worrying thing, though, is that we have seen a couple moments as we get back into the game here that Jame just gets a little too aggressive, right? He doesn't have all his boys with him. He doesn't have his whole team with him. And he's just kind of diving in 1v4. Yeah, they're trading one for one, but the kills are going on to the Jinx. The one way Comets get back into this game is by feeding the Chimney Chimney Machine. Yep, put it all down the chimney, give him all the gifts and all the presents. <laughs> as, you know, it's, again, it's still not bad at all. This is only the second dragon that's going to go over to the Eutectic. So this doesn't mean the comments are well within it. If they're able to make a play onto Zep here, that would be huge. This is getting lower and lower, down to half HP. He's going to use the Ragnarok, but John gets put on the wrong side of the tracks, but he's got enough damage to be able to take this guy out. It's a big shutdown going over to the Kindred. Call the Forge God coming out. It's going to hit one member because of a big block from Dr. Persuasion. He's been really good with the Braum Shields. Oh yeah, uh, on point. I can see why they took this so early. Persuasion blocking Braum Shields, blocking Jinx Autos. He's been blocking a lot with that door here. And although Zep does go down, Evrot is gonna go into this side lane. He is a menace and Zarif is just gonna eat a raw ulti. Yeah, I mean, he's been eating a ton of those raw ultis. He's just got oh, nothing to do. Oh no, Jame, don't do it to him. No, James, please, man. This guy's got a family. Whoa. You know what they hey. say about karma? Revoke oh, his license. Oh. Revoke his license. Rius? Are we sure he's got a license? That's... Nope. Oh, man, that's... Yikes. Oh, they, got, they got what they wanted out of that. Right? You know, it's, we got to make fun of them for something, right? Cause, because despite the kill score, uh, the Utexics have been playing quite well. I'm calling 1-800-DMV. Get this guy license tested again. I, I don't... 1-800-DMV. James is the only person allowed on this team to try that. I will say this time and time again. Junglers should only be driving the Heralds. Nobody else. Not the AD carries. Not the supports. Junglers only. They did get what they wanted out of it, but unfortunately for the Comets, that one little misstep is definitely not enough to bring them back into this game. Five and a half thousand gold down right now. You're 20 minutes in. You have that dragon like you mentioned, Yanni, early on. So you do have those scaling options available. But when is Eutectix just going to pull the trigger on Baron? Because it's up right now. And I'm sure as hell think they can just let it rip like any time they want. Zarif, no! I think this is going to be the time. They're going to catch out Zarif and take him out. This has to mean that it's time to go do the Baron. The pings are on it. Shibby, you called it. The Eutectics are looking to make something happen. The Comets are going to give chase here, but a 5v4 is going to make life very difficult. Baron going to be taken 20 and a half minutes rocket, in. Though. I don't think that's going to really do much here. If he gets the steal, I mean, I'll eat my shoe on broadcast. <laughs> Thank God I didn't shoe have to head. eat my shoe, shoe on, on broadcast. On broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I, I love you, bro, because I know you would have done it. Yeah, um, the, I would have, yeah. The Baron for turret trade, although Dr. Persuasion will at least stop Nabisi's back, but should be A-OK -okay without any issues here. Uh, can we get a stack check on Kindred? Because I think they did just take out the Gromp. So that should put them on three. It might put them on four. Four. That is going to be the fourth one. So we are finally getting the Kindred spike here, but down 7,000 gold. Should be, is it too late? 21 minutes in. I mean, I'm throwing a little confetti, right? I'm I'm a little happy, but yeah, it, it's it's... It's a little late. Let, let's be generous. It's a little late. I mean, it is kind of not at this point where you can contest. I mean, she does have the items, right? Kraken Slayer, Triforce. She's at the four stack mark. She can really start participating in some of these fights. Your tactics have to be a little bit cleaner, right? They can't just start inting the game away, right? Jame has been kind of a little bit aggressive. Zep as well. And now on the side lane, three versus one. I think Zep wins these, though. Uh, Zep him. 
That is the question. The only problem is the Kindred Ult is available, but he can't get close to the BC. <laughs> he goes one for one in a 3v1, man. That's disgusting. Yeah, that's just Olaf and the rest of the team collapsing right now. They want more. They said, you took my boy Zep down. Oh, Zarif, man. That's just cruel and unusual punishment. He's on an item and a half. The Kindred's going to fall as well. This game has well and truly gotten out of control here, Shibby. Yeah, Eutectics, I said they had to clean it up. They're grouping, they're using their power effectively. They've got damn good siege with the Caitlyn and the Orianna. I don't think they'll be able to end the game just yet, but they should result in at least one inhibitor tower. I think they should send one of their laners up top lane to get that mid lane pushing with the Baron, potentially the Caitlyn, potentially the Orianna, but they're just going to full send it onto bot lane into him. Yeah, why wouldn't you, right? You still have Orianna Shockwave available, even with Zarif and Kindred coming up. You can just do, you can take this 5v4 and probably win it, but they will wisely get out of there, get their inhibitor, and walk away with the dragon coming up in about 20 seconds. I presume somebody will pick that off as well. Yeah, and you know, as we're kind of nearing towards the 23, 24 minute mark, I really just want to shout out Zep and James specifically for doing such a good job of keeping the jungler down, keeping Johnny away from his team, and not allowing him to play the game, right? He's 5-5-2. Five, five and two. He's if you look at the box score, yeah, he's had an okay game on Kindred, but just don't look at the first 10 minutes because the guy was just not allowed to play League of Legends and the Eutectics, they came Long in with the plan be. and they executed damn near perfectly in the early game. Let's see what happens. The Maokai Roots are going to come out. It's going to root up one, two, three members, but Everot looking to get into position here. You know he's looking for the big shockwave. It's oh, all the way on the players doing the BC going very deep, but Everot looking for more, and he'll only be able to find one because of the flash, but that's going to be so problematic here. Call the Forge out coming through. Can't even hit the second part of it as he goes down as well, and Kindred, the last one standing, trying to run away from Volibear like you've been doing all game but you can't outrun this bear as that will be an ace for the Eutectics. Yeah, and that should be the end of the game here. TP went down from Evrod and game one ending in around 24 and a half minutes. Textbook early game composition. This is how you smash scaling. This is what you do to keep a good scaling composition down. Comets will have to go back to the drawing board. I don't think they can run... We'll see if things stay the same for right now. Yeah, comments back onto the blue side. UHSP, the Eutectics, onto the red side here. They're going to have that counter pick available for themselves. Most likely, Everot will be taking it. I wonder if the comments are just going to slam five bands against them again. Why not? This time, just don't take the karma. Play something more aggressive. That's what I kind of recommended from them. The players to watch, Everett's obviously very, very solid. He can hold himself in his own right. But like we mentioned, Zep and Jane, these two guys working in tandem together, making sure that wherever they are on the map, they're playing together, they're fighting together, they're skirmishing, because they understand that they'll have that lane prior mid. If I'm Jane, I'm going to use that every single time, invade the top side, pick something aggressive. I don't know if the Comets are going to use their B1 to go for Maokai again specifically. It's a solid pick, don't get me wrong, but I think something like the Volley Bear, a little bit stronger in the jungle, and allows for that early game facilitation, will do wonders for the Comets. We'll see what the final option is as they're starting to round out bands. It looks like they will ban away the Maokai, so clearly a different first pick in mind, Shibby. Yeah, and that's going to leave up one of Everot's champions. I think the Silas was taken out on that third band last rotation. Don't know if he'll opt in it for opt in it again. It was until he uh, gets Ari, removed here. It was Ari, Ari, yeah. It was mm -hmm. Ari removed. So now, Comets, you have to make the decision. Are you going to give that over? Or are you going to first pick that for yourselves here? A lot of options. Volibear still on the table. Smolder available. Instead, they are going with the Karma. Now, I'm not sad yet. Because it can get flexed into Nabisi's role, true, or it can true. get thrown into Paul's. It is a very flexible champion in that, right? At least minimum of three-way flex. So let's see if they're trying to bait something out from UHSP, as they are not going to kind of switch up their draft. They don't really need to, in my opinion, right? Why not take the Caitlyn for Regis here? Yeah, it's a little tough, right? Because, you know, Ezreal's banned. So if you're going to flex the Karma, right? Ezreal's banned away. One of your best pairings. Caitlyn gets picked away, which is a really solid pairing with Karma. I mean, yeah. you have Varus, right? And we saw Chimney do really, really well on it. But, 
you know, seeing this Jarvin lock in, I, I wonder what the Comets are going to opt to here because it, it just feels like it's going to be a little again? difficult. They are going to go to the Jinx again. They did have a fine early game with it. You know, they were the first ones to pick up kills. Obviously, things got a little unfortunate, and Rias was able to get two of his own. Uh, so that wasn't the problem. I would like to see something that gives a little bit more to the team composition as they finally have their go button in Annie. Yeah, that was banned out in the second phase from UHSP as well. So they're going to lock that in early, but it's kind of scary, right? Taking your mid laner this early and still leaving so many options on the table. We have seen similar compositions like the Annie mid with a hard carry jungler. Famously, I think everybody knows his name by now. The Milkman, Milky Way himself on FPX. They love to run this kind that. of... He's the Milkman! He's the Milkman! No, uh, he's the Milky Way because he's beautiful and wondrous and vast and really cool. Now he's the Milkman because milk he's milking man, all no. the enemies for oh, all their gold. Oh, oh God, why we Anyways, have to go there, man? All right, Zarif should play that supportive Annie role. We'll see what carry Johnny opts in to pick. I don't think it's going to be the Kindred again. Well, now it can't be the Kindred because UHSP banned it out here. But there's still... There still is the ability to pick these carry style junglers as the Oriana and Ari are taken away. But I, at this point, you're four banning mid laners. I still feel like Everot has the Syndra available. He's got other mid laners, right? I, I, Azir is disabled, luckily, so he doesn't have to worry about that. But there's still so much this guy has in his pockets. I don't know if that's the move. I feel like you should ban away some top laners, get Paul something a little bit better because he was not having a fun time against Zep. Yeah, and if you pick something really strong here with a really strong ultimate, you can just, uh, you know, it's like, all right, you could just, that's a really strong ultimate. Yeah, I was just going to say, you could just blow somebody up on that team, and the Unleashed Power is going to do a heck of a lot. That is, a, you know, it's just an Everot pick, man. This is going to be a really tough game, especially because, you know, Zarif's abilities are lower range than the auto attacks, and Chimney Chimney going to opt into the poppy here. You mentioned you wanted to see a carry. You look like you just tasted some sour milk after that poppy pick. Tell me about it. I mean, it's it's good in a vacuum, right? Like, okay, you counter the Jarvan engage, but now all your eggs are in the Chimney Chimney basket. Yeah, you have Paul onto the Darius, dissuades the Udir potentially in that top lane. But knowing Zap, he might just run the... That's not an Oriana, right? Okay, that's an Olaf. Yeah, I was going to say, he's just going to run the Olaf, right? And that's fine. You can run that back once again. He's got a lot of early laning. It's Gragas. I've been yeah. lied to three times. It's yeah. not Oriana. It's not Olaf. It's Gragas in the top lane. The great neutralizer. Bone yep. by himself will be in the top lane. And that's fine. You run that. You've got Syndra. You've got Caitlyn plus Milio, who is just going to run a muck in that bot lane. That's going to be rough with the extended range. Karma is flexed into that support role, but I'm looking at the profile for the Comets. It's Chimney Chimney, and that's about it for the damage profile. Yeah, Zarif can do a little bit. If Paul gets off the ground, he'll be able to do some as well, but this is going to be a really tough game for the Comets here. It just feels like the Eutectics got everything they wanted. They've got an early game ganking jungler. They've got a really strong mid lane. Uh, they've got one of the best bot lane duos that you can have, and a great neutralizer, as you mentioned uh, for Paul up top. We have made it onto Summoner's Rift, and already they're trying to bring the battle to Jane. Yeah, they got the stun down, but realistically, he's going to be fine. I do want to see some defensive warding. I don't think... Uh-oh, Zarif and Paul are getting collapsed oh, Zarif, on, though. Zarif had to walk into the barrel. Rias is ghosting, but unable to get to Zarif. So, already forcing the flash out of Annie is really big. Especially into Evrot, who has the flash. I don't think Zarif should get into position to get early game killed here. That flash should be up before he level 6, but Everot has been known to flex his muscles in this Syndra Annie lane. I love Syndra because you outrange him, you have the ability to stun, Annie has to like really walk up and sacrifice some of her HP to get that CS, and with the extended range on the stun, on the ball, it feels like Everot is poised to just lane dominate this Annie once again. A zap! Zep? One more auto flash for flash there means that Zep will be able to survive. Paul was unable to get that auto off, but a very scary scenario for Zep. Yeah, he's going to kind of walk back here. He does have that passive, right, with Gragas. You get a little bit of HP regained when you use an ability here. He's going to chug on those potions. Should be all right. But Paul's summonerless. Level right? two Jane could just come here. 
It's game time. Flash forward. Knock up there. Paul's oh. in a lot of trouble now, but a good flash from the Poppy to knock Jame against the wall. Jame is now the one in trouble as Poppy is throwing the hammer down. Zep needs to try to get out. Should be just fine, but a great counter there from the Comets. I love what Johnny did, right? He felt that gank coming, and he just trails Jame. And unfortunately, Zep is at level two. He can't follow up with the E. No stun. Nothing available. Just has a barrel and his autos. And Jame not able to pick up that kill. Paul chugging the potions with the Dorons. I like that. Good start for the Comets here to deny Jame some of that early game aggression that you typically see from the Jarvan. Yeah, real good stuff. It's exactly what you want, as you mentioned. Take a look at the bottom of the image. Chimney has burned his ghost and is ready to just rifle away. He'll burn from the Melio here as Reyes is able to trade a couple of auto attacks back. A really strange use of the ghost, Shibby, I have to say. Yeah, I think they were just trying to kind of maybe get the auto walking going, right? See if you can get in range, see if they're willing to take the fight. But Rias and Dr. Persuasion just backing out, understanding where they need to be. Uh-oh, Jame? Is he just going to spite this away? Well, he's going to be spotted out here, and Jame could be the one who's in trouble. Good knock up. Lance, who's got it? It's Jame. Jame is now level three to Poppy's level two. Evrod is on the way, but Poppy should be able to just walk this out back to the turret. Oh. Dodges out on the lance just by a little bit. Yeah, and that's kind of what you have to do as the poppy. Unfortunately, you just kind of have to take the invasion on the chin. There's not a lot you can do because of her early clearing power. And because she went for that early game gank, her rhythm is, is off, and she can't really clear as fast as the Jarvan here. So James found the opportunity, stuck into the red buff, luckily wins the smite fight, hits level three, and just has complete control of that quadrant of the jungle. When you've got that Gragas in the top lane, you don't really need to give it too much attention. Oh. But Zep might just get the solo bolo. Oh, Zep said, I want all the attention. Slams the barrel on Darius' head. Send him home with the barrel and the suspenders on him, boy. Yeah, just back to the fountain here. So now Paul's losing in the top side. You've got full, or you had full control of that quadrant in the bot lane. Rias and Persuasion on this Caitlyn, on this Milio, are allowed to play more aggressive. They're allowed to use this Caitlyn to their advantage. As we do see Johnny sneaking into position. No wards here. Let's see if Comet's bot lane can get a kill here with the gank coming around. Chimney's out of mana to BC. is lagging behind. Good hex flash there. They're going to try to get on Emilio, but he flashes away. And now Rias in a little bit of trouble. Flashes right up against the wall and gets slammed right in. Chimney okay. able to pick up that kill. But Jame looking for a little bit more as the Emilio healing. But Chimney's got the attack speed to force him off. Yeah, He's looking bit of for an odd flash. The beast is in a lot of trouble. A couple of auto attacks. The shield is out. The lance Ooh. with one more auto attack might do it, but again, forced off. Now has to try to sidestep the chompers as Jame is getting rifled with auto attacks. Flashing forward, knock up into the poppy wall. Chimney picks it up. Will die for Minions. a sense. Oh, it's multiple kills going down here. As Jame actually got credit for the last one. The minions help him out and Two for three overall. Oh, the promise no. still come in. And that's just Everett slamming the ultimate into Zarif's face here. Don't we talked it. about the Syndra. We talked about how good it is into the Annie. And that's what happens. Unleashed power. Zarif, there's just zero counterplay. Spheres in your face, my friend. That's going to be a <laughs> lot of damage. Not a whole lot that you can do about it. The point and click ultimate is just a little too strong sometimes. Yeah, I mean, that's why Evrot favored this matchup. That's why I expected it to come out once that Annie got lick, locked in on that first rotation. I'm like, oh, you just have Syndra available. You can win that lane. It's a very lane stompy kind of champion. As Rias is just kind of 1v2 him very casually right now. <laughs> yeah, he said, I got my Poppy. Uh, not my Poppy, my Emilio. Everything's all good. Things fine. As Zep, yep. <laughs> Flash of the thumbs up. He gets out. This Flash wasn't even up yet. This has been a lane, you know, the great neutralizer has... Uh, Done a little bit of neutralizing of his own. He is it actually being the one to get the job done, get the kills, get a CS lead too. Paul has just had a rough go at it. Yeah, like Darius Lockin isn't as uh, insane of a blind pick as you can think of as the Gragas is available. Has the range, has the AP ratios as well. Is Zarif's just oh. going to drop it on him? Uh, Jame is going to be able to get... Oh, no, not quite. Good flash from Zarif. Got the point and click Q, able to get the job done. Yeah, but that flashless Annie is going to open up Evrot for another play, right? As Rias is just, oh, just Rias, tanking autos. Rias is just dead. 
The BC just takes him out. Here comes Poppy to try to make a play onto Everot here. Tibbers is Tibbers? lumbering around from the side. Paul is also on the way down. This is a three level difference, though. You saw what one Dark Sphere did to the Poppy. And he's just throwing <laughs> Tibbers around. Whoa! Flash into the wall. Everot in a little bit of trouble here, but does have the Melio healing. Looking for oh. more good double stun there as Jame is on the way. He's going to flag and drag on top of Zarif. And Zarif is going to go down with one auto attack, one lance, and he'll just walk back in. Didn't want to give it to Everot. Smart move from Zarif to just give that over to Jame here, but really well played from Everot to kind of keep enticing them. Be like, hey, Fight me, my team's coming, just a little bit more, two, three seconds in. Jane comes in, Persuasion comes in, a zap. I'll use the flash. Uh -oh. Dunked him. Uh just absolutely dunked him. Look away, avert your eyes. That was nasty <laughs> what just happened. Yeah, that's not allowed in some countries what oh, he's Everot. doing. But Everot, you can't avert your eyes away from Ooh. what this man's going to do to your Slow. mid laner, to your jungler. No, he cued the, he cued the Annie, but the Annie had the shield up and he killed himself. Busted. See me low mid laner, by the way. <laughs> busted. Uh oh, Reyes. Oh, Reyes is also busted. He's trying to ghost away, but hard to move when you're rooted up and you have to try to sidestep the chompers. But Chimney Chimney, not able to take him down. You saw a couple moments ago, no ultimate available for him. Yeah, there might be that super mega death rocket that's actually on cooldown. I lied, but yeah, one for one overall. If you're Zarif, you say we take those. Everot, though. Two, one, and one. Lost chapter is building towards what's most likely going to be a Ludens oh, here. No. Zarif is in a lot of trouble. Yeah, Zarif is uh, not a whole lot of places to go. Stunned up, knocked up, dead. You don't got to go home, but you got to get the hell out of mid lane. <laughs> Everot and Jame absolutely evicting my man. And two and three on the Annie. He's got Merc Treads, a book, and some dreams, realistically. As the CS is looking very dire. You talk about the kills. It's a 30 plus CS lead for Everot right now. That's what happens when you give somebody like him a favorable matchup. The Syndra into Annie. Just doing wonders. And Jame is not done. No, certainly not, but I think he is finally done now. And you mentioned Zarif's dreams. Call him Meek Mill because those dreams may actually be nightmares. Uh, <laughs> he'll have nightmares of Everot uh, for a long time, especially after game one. And game two is no different. But. You get a flash any ultimate onto multiple targets. No, you're still cooking. The only problem is Everot lands another scatter of the week. He's got ultimate available. He'll just kill him. Yeah, I mean, the dream scenario for Comets here is that Paul and Chimney kind of just get the resets going, right? With the Jinx, with the Darius. They can look to take take over team, team fights. They just need that one kill, right? And Everot feeling himself a little bit. I thought he was going to range for that unleashed power, but isn't. Zep and Paul, Zep. Dookie get out here. Let's see if Paul can get another kill for himself. Yeah, Zep is taking this fight. That's with the away with the cask, but the ghost is available. Another nice slow. Zep still has the body slam and will use it to get out. Yeah, good explosive cask from him. Everot is just dutifully pushing this mid lane. I think he knows, but he doesn't care because Zarif's just dead. Oh, he dies. Yep. It will be a one for one. And I don't think he gets credit for that last plate, but... You know, it just decides, you know what, I want the one for one here. I want to deny as much CS as possible. Uh, yeah, it's, it's it's a rough life if you're Zarif. There's not really much more you can say. Yeah, you picked the Annie for team fight, right? You picked it for the setup for the rest of your team. You just kind of have to weather Ever the Everrot storm here. Hold on. Oh. Ultimate's available. One more auto, but he flashes away. That means Zep will survive. As Jame is just going to go on top of the BC. It was warded. Twas but a clever ruse. The ultimate from Caitlyn downtown didn't quite get the kill. Jame will be able to walk out without a problem. Yeah, the BC goes down and the rest, as the TP comes in, Everot on the backside. Oh, Everot just does so much damage. Chimney never stood a chance. He gets swept up. Now, Zarif is able to trade back. So it is a oh. one for one, making a two for one in favor of the comments because they went up on the top side as well. This dragon is available. We'll see if they want to go for it. Everot, again, no ultimate available, but does quite a bit of damage. Nice block there from the poppy as Zarif is looking to turn this one around, but Tivers is not available any longer. Nice. They do blow up Jame. Shut down going over to Nabisi. Johnny has just been electric on this poppy. I was scratching my head a little bit. I said it's good in a vacuum. But this oh, guy's no. been making plays. Everyone is also making plays, and Rias is free hitting. Teleport coming in for the Gragas, but Rias gets a double kill on the other side. 
Now it's Poppy trying to heal up on the fruits, but not really too much you can do. Melio will uh, pocket that one sneakily. Yeah, I'll put the coins in his purse here and just be like, yeah, I need the gold. I am a support. I'll, I need to empower the rest of my team here. As that fight looked good originally for the comments, is Everot. Oh, good flash from Chimney means he doesn't take as much damage. Another good sidestep. Chimney is going crazy right now. Makes the play in a 2v1. Flash the mastery, young man. Yeah, beautiful sidestep. And Zep caught between three members. The fat yes. man's not going to get out. Yeah, Zep is in a lot of trouble here. Will be rooted up. Who gets the kill? It's going to be Paul. And that means it's grub it up dubbing for the Comets. Yeah, uh, and they're going to be able to potentially get that five grub split here. As the Eutectics were only able to get one, but Zarif don't oh, listen, think he's Emilio's in a lot of trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah he's, not, he's not in trouble. I thought there was more on the way, but it's just Persuasion and Reyes here. You look at the Eutectics right now, despite everything, you know, kind of in the mid game, or at least, sorry, in the mid lane going their favor, bot lane doing well, the 13 minute mark, only 1,000 gold separates these two teams. If you take a look back at game one, it was at 3,000 gold at this point. That how that you tactics were ahead. So doing a lot better in game one, doing a little bit more power into the early game. And I will say Johnny's been having a fantastic poppy game, just facilitating kills for the rest of his team. Let's see if he's gonna facilitate one more, knocking Gragas into the wall. He's gonna tank it up first, but now it's Paul's time to tank. He'll get hit with one, two. Apprehend is there. No hmm. ultimate landing from Chimney. Chimney flash forced out from Paul. Can you see? Maybe you think they have a kill on Evra. That's a strong Syndra guy. Oh, I yeah. don't think you want to go here as you see the gold flash right now. The singular strongest member, I believe, was Evra. But not far, not far behind Chimney, Chimney, and Paul. Picking up that carry load. We talked about damage profile being a little low. But if your Jinx is getting fed, if Paul's getting resets, there is definitely a good way back into this game and to win these team fights. I'm just afraid because it feels like the Eutectics haven't really grouped five and fought a team fight yet. And that's where the big decider is. That's where you find out, are we actually that far behind or can we scrap with them? Yeah, that's what I was waiting for too, right? You see the comments are up in kills, down a little bit in gold. But I mean, once the Eutectics group up, and you need Zep to uh, ult people away from a huge knockup. You need Evrot to target the Poppy with his ultimate or something like that. You need a lot of things to go right if you're the Comets, uh, because I don't know if they're going to be able to protect Chimney Chimney. They're not going to even be able to protect their blue buff. Everybody is here. The Eutectics are showing up, and Evron able to pick up the kill, and it's Rift Herald time. Avengers, assemble! <laughs> That's literally what happened. The Eutectics just <laughs> absolutely four-man Rome squad destroyed Johnny in his jungle. Knight's Valve Poppy, he's got no real combat stats ready to go. That's going to secure the blue buff. That's going to secure what is this Herald here. We've got Dragon coming up in two minutes. And oh, by the way, with that Caitlyn Milia lane, with that dominance in the mid lane for Evrot, they've been able to pick up two Dragons. They should be looking at what is a 22 to 23 minute Cloud Soul, which is just going to spell bad, bad things for the Comets later into this game. Yeah, and you know, you said Avengers Assemble. It is more like Alloys Assemble because of what you Eutectics <laughs> actually are. They're alloys of inorganics or organics, and they form a single common crystal when they crystallize. So the Eutectics are certainly crystallizing on that blue buff and making it their own. Uh, and, you know, you mentioning the Avengers while we have some time. Storm Surge Gragas is, is just Thor, no? Obviously, we yeah. don't have a Storm Surge Gragas here, but I'm trying to, you know, obviously Syndra Scarlet, which is... Uh, you know, not Thor is trying to run away, but Darius is going to pull him back in. Pop the goat. Oh, there's a sneaky, sneaky barrel out of Zep. The ghost is still on. He does have flash. Will he be able to actually get away? Might have to burn him. Paul no. can't get close. He will survive. Meanwhile, Johnny from an odd angle there. Persuasion will be able to survive. Rehis able to deal a lot of damage here. Well protected. Ghost available and burnt. Jame is on the way looking for a little bit more. The Beastie's going to be the target. Flash for Hold Flash. The GP. The Beastie survives. Ace in the hole. And Chimney can't protect him. It's Rius on a rampage. Looking for a little bit more. Johnny trying to keep the Gragas out. Jame on the other side trying to help out Everop, but he didn't need it. And now this Poppy is caught between a rock and a hard place. Has to flash away from a potential scatter of the week. Greg is still going over the wall looking for more. Rift Herald getting dropped in the mid lane. A crazy sequence here by the Eugenics. This is why we let junglers drive. You see how he's able to crash it? 
into both turrets here. If that's any other roll that would have gone to the top lane or would have gone backwards. As with that team fight, I'll call it a team fight. A couple scattered skirmishes here and there. The Eutectics attain full control of mid lane. They're going to go back, get the dragon, and yeah, we talked about it. Five members fought five members, but realistically, Eutectics won on every single front. Yeah, these guys are going crazy. They are way far ahead at this point, Shibby. Going to put themselves on sole point here. Uh, I mean, you were waiting oh, for Zep. that one fight to pop off. As Zep, another nice barrel, but he's not really going to be able to get out of there. As Johnny's going to knock him a little closer to the ground. Oh, oh Zep's got the moves, but uh, Zarif's got the stun, and he's got enough damage to take him down. I've never seen a more graceful... Gragas than Zep, man. That was some smooth moves coming out from him. Buying enough time. Dragon goes over into the way of the Eutectics. But with that heavy investment from the Comets onto that top side, realistically, everything else, the Eutectics way. Persuasion's the only one here. I think he should just leave the turret. Brother. He's just um, dead. He just gets run over. Jame is here, too. Because the Comets are starting to make some plays here. Chimney Chimney able to flash away. Johnny from the side looking to push Jame in a little closer to the wall, but he pushed it further away. Jame is going to go down. Super Mega Death Rocket lands. Have made some plays. Two kills for themselves. The turret as well. They're able to take out Jame. They were able to take out Persuasion. I don't think they're going to be able to get much more. And that's a much needed gold into their pocket, specifically Chimney Chimney, picking up another kill for themselves. One of the big carry threats for the Comets. He is going to be cresting up onto two items here. And that's an ultimate being pushed. Ooh. I think it's it stopped damage. the back. Yeah, yeah. It, it was. Yeah, but you look at the build. Reyes has static plus rapid fire cannon. He's a pea shooter right now. Yeah, he is. He's, listen, you know, <laughs> sometimes you get your sniper, right? And you're like, I've got a bear at 50 cal. I'm shooting one time every five seconds. And then sometimes you're playing with the auto sniper because you're a noob, right? And you're shooting a yeah. five bullets every second. That's Fair exactly enough. what's going on with Rias here. Yeah, he's just trying to fa attack as fast as possible, as far away as possible. Zepto, can I be able to put on the fancy moves once again? Phase Rush is just busted on this champion, oddly, let's be honest. Oddly nimble for a large guy. Kind of looks like Jason Kelsey out there. Yeah. Uh, might actually be better. Whoa, oh, wait a minute. Great barrel. Nabisi is in a whole lot of trouble. Jame is going to get there. Rias is going to be able to close it on the kill. Zarif trying to come in from the side. Here comes a teleport. It's Evra trying to get into the party here as they're chasing down the rest of the members of the Comets. Zep looking to get yep. a little bit closer. Can he chase him down? He's trying to go as fast as he can. Just getting popped. Good tibbers there, but the fight's going to break out. And this poppy's going to get blown up. Jame will go Whoa. down for it. Paul, flash apprehend, goes after Evrock. Chimney? Evrock trying to run away. Evrock goes down. It's Chimney with the shutdown. Now it's time. Will Zep finally die? He's able to sidestep damn near everything. Rius on the backside, ace of the hole, takes out Zarif. But Rius is on the wrong side of the tracks here. Does he have an escape route? No. No. He does not have an escape mm. route. Yeah, one rocket that crits to the face, and Chimney Chimney picks up quite a kill, quite a couple kills here. And the call is for Baron. Zep, can he be the hero? Can he call down Thor's hammer? You said he was an Avenger. Now's the time to assemble. Let's see. Is Zep an Avengers level threat? He might be because they get a lot of people toward him. He's ignited. He's a little low, waiting for Emilio to show up, but the Baron will survive. Good from Zep here to stall it out, use the explosive cast to get them low enough. I respect the call, Comets, as that gold lead, they were down, what, five, six thousand? Slowly but surely, although the objective bounties are still up, they're only down about three thousand here. And crucially, Chimney Chimney has been picking up kill after kill. He's working towards that IE, and he's safe as can be, right? There's nobody that really has the ability to dive him. Jane can't get in, because Poppy has a flash. From Ray. I literally just saw a flash from Reyes on the top side. I think he was trying to auto Chimney here. That's going to cost him. But regardless, nobody can really get in onto Chimney Chimney here because the Poppy W, they've got good defense. Just Chimney has to pump out the damage. Well, let's see if Zep is going to be able to get himself out of this one. He's trying to kite away. Good Gragas Barrel once again, but he's so slow. He's trying to body slam his way out. Throws up the thumbs up and oh! dies to the Super Mega Death Rocket. 
the long range downtown call out here. Zep unfortunately dodges everything but the ulti, and that's gonna get Chimney Chimney to his IE. He's three items. One of the strongest members, if not the mm -hmm. strongest member in the game right now. It's can he get the damage off? Can he pop off with the lethal tempo and the rocket's range? It's up to Zarif, it's up to Paul, it's up to Johnny to keep him alive and set him up for the slam dunk right now. Flash to the gold. Yeah, he is technically the singular strongest member based off of gold. Oh, Nabisi is so dead. Evrod able to pick up a kill, and that's going to be a big blow to the Comets as they want to try to prevent this soul. It's a pretty solid soul for the side of the Eutectics. See if they look for anything more. Zep just wants to go in. The land of Sun and Paul. Paul looking to turn Zarif from the side with a huge poppy ultimate, huge hammer as well. But oh. everyone keeps him away. But they shut down the Caitlyn with the super mega death rocket. Now Poppy looking to lead the way. Zarif down to oh about God. half HP. They're at a standstill. Zep goes in. Jame trying to get the big knockup. Gets knocked up himself. They're gonna target Paul. Paul's still alive for right now. Watch Chimney. Evrot is able to get in there and do some damage, but Paul survives. Evrock goes down. Chimney's popping off. Melio doesn't have many places to go. He's so low, but survives for now as this Jinx is fully online. What a beautiful, beautiful fight from the Comets. The big decider there, Zarif was in, in the bush, out of vision, waited for Reyes, waited for Evrot to walk up and just drop Tibbers on top of him and a slam dunk from Johnny to ult away two members to get the man advantage and allow Chimney Chimney to walk up and get rocket after rocket after rocket and pick up more kills for himself. I was worried about the damage profile, but throw everything into the Chimney Bank because he's going to take you to game three for the Comets. He's hit him downtown like Steph Curry, and he's been able to cut through and make some quick sidesteps like AI. Zep very low. Zarif is chasing him down. Drops Tibbers on him. The shields isn't enough. Zep will die. Chimney is flashing forward. He wants to end this game. He gets holded in the face by Syndrome, but is still alive. Backside, Chimney gets knocked up. He's shielded. Can they shut him down? Jame, it's not Jame time. Time is run out for the Eutectics. They're going to turn their tail towards this Baron. I think they can still do it here. It's not impossible. You've got a 5v3 man advantage. Can Persuasion, Reyes, and Evrot stall it out long enough? Uh-oh, it's looking Evrot tight really here. Low. Evrot really, really low. Reyes needs to go Super Saiyan mode. Let's see what he can do. Net misses. Ace in the hole. Going to do some damage to Zarif. He's frontlining. He's going to get rooted up. Are they going to turn on him? He's trying to get away. Big shutdown, but Paul and Chimney are able to take him down. Poppy from the side, forcing the flash out of Evrot. Evrot gets knocked up. Paul in hot pursuit. Evrot's about to get apprehended, but he gets a double kill instead. Nabisi goes down, and the Comets can't claim the Baron. The ever so enticing Baron claims more and more victims every year, Yanni. You throw and you throw and you throw. The Comets couldn't decide what they wanted to do. Did they want to turn? Did they want to burn the Baron? And with that, with that indecisiveness, they pay the ultimate price. They give the Eutectics time to get back, time to try to turn the game on its head. They're still 1,000 gold ahead. But Chimney Chimney and the rest of the Comets, there was a window for them to take control. There was a window for them to be into the driver's seat. But it's just been closed. And now they've got to get another team fight win. I don't know how many more sidesteps Chimney Chimney can do to win this game. He's got no summoners, too. This is going to be really difficult. Paul's got no summoners either. Those are two of your stronger members that have absolutely nothing. And the BC's going to get picked immediately. And no, no, they're going to get trapped inside. Zarif is going to go golden. Dr. Persuasion trying to live. Jame also trying to live, but Zarif goes down. Jame able to flag and drag his way out. Evrot trying to do what he can. Chimney Chimney has lost a little bit of HP, but has no ultimate available. It's a 4v3 and the Comets. Let's see what they're going to do. Are they going to give chase? Zarif is up in 25 seconds. TP available. They just have to try to stall this Baron out. I don't even think they want to chance it. They're so afraid right now. They have to know it's going down. What's the call, Comets? What are you going to do? Well, Poppy is going to get engaged on by Zep. He's going to do a little bit of damage, but not too much more. Paul going to try to get into the pit here. Who's got the smite? Who's got the oh! kill? It's Paul! Chimney on the side, rifling away on the Syndra, but has to walk it out. Zep is going to chase down the Poppy, and the rest of the Comets say, Farewell, my friend. Your death is a good one die for a bear and let's see if the chase keeps going paul and chimney chimney on the backside they might oh, want to turn it 
Paul wants all the smoke. The dunk goes down, but not quite the kill. Chimney Chimney is still okay, but Paul is down. Super Mega Death Rocket! Yes! <laughs> oh, he could have had three! But Chimney's trying to get in closer. He's got to deal with the 1v1 to the Caitlyn, and he can't do it. Zep on the side doing a lot of damage to Nabisi. Nabisi gets oh! stuck up and killed. Zarif is in a bad spot. He's going to get dunked down, too. The Comets have pittered out. They've hit the atmosphere and flamed away. Chimney, Chimney, the sole surviving member, Baron in his pocket. Two seconds till Johnny and 15 till Paul. The game's not over, but the Comets, they giveth and they taketh, and they're about to giveth me a heart attack, Yanni. That super mega death rocket could have been the end of the game. It's a game of inches. When you needed your guy to call game from downtown, he bricked it. He hit the rim. <laughs> and he couldn't get it done. But this game is not over yet, Shibby. We haven't even hit the soul yet, so the Comets still have plenty of time. They still have really good scaling on their side, and the gold lead isn't even that large. Chimney should have his ghost up for this fight. I don't think the flash will be available for this dragon, but you look at Reyes, he's actually hurting now, right? He's got the IE, he's got the static. He hurts if he can get some autos, the empowered onto Chimney. Might just be the difference maker here. Comets trying to get control of their jungle. They're trying to muscle their way in. But Eutectics are doing a good job of taking that mid lane prio, pushing it in. And they're going to turn their heads towards this dragon. Comets, are you going to contest it? Or are you going to try to get as much as you can in the mid lane? Zep might be caught out. Zep takes so much damage. Chimney Chimney has the speed up. Dragon and Soul going to be secured for the Eutectics, but here come the Comets, looking to get into this jungle, try and stop them. They're gonna move over to the mid lane now, as Everot has been They're spotted out by Poppy. Good job, yeah, stopping the backs there means that the Comets are gonna be able to get this push. Look at mid, they're gonna be able to get the passive off of Jinx, the one of the best turret takers now. Let's see how much more they can do here. Jinx one member Baron. is down. Jinx still has Baron, so it's really helping out this wave. Everot from the side, good scatter of the week, hits a Ooh. couple. Not enough damage though. Zep is still down for 10 more seconds, but has a teleport available. We'll see what he wants to do with it. He's got a couple of good wards to go to. As it looks like the Eutectics are going to try to push here. Jane looking to get TP. in range. Scatter of the Week does not land. Paul frontlining Chimney, completely protected, but the Annie goes down. Chimney pushing forward, flashing on Everot. Chimney! Everot goes down! Shut down for Chimney Chimney as he's looking for more. Super Mega Death Rocket doesn't quite kill the Milio, and the Zap doesn't land either. But Zep, not Zap, is lurking from behind. Do they know? Looking to make a big play. Are they know or should be? They certainly are now. They're going to push to the Nexus turrets. Nabisi taking a lot of damage. Chimney Chimney takes out the first turret and is looking to finish this game off, but he's so low. He's oh, so Zap! low, man. He's going to go down almost assuredly. Somebody's got to catch him. Chimney, Chimney, still alive. Zep, oh, body bump right into him. And Paul's going to go down too for the double kill. And Zep be the last one standing. He's got to try to get away. And Zep, the hero that they needed, not the one they deserved. Yanni, Zep is locked in more than a man in solitary confinement. He gets the kill. He takes down Chimney. And it breeds new life into the Eutectics. Woo! What a game we have had here tonight, Shibby. The Comets down, but not out after losing game one. The Comets down, but not out after the early to mid game. They managed to find a way to make it to their win conditions. Jinx is on five items, but no Guardian Angel, no defensive items to note. We sit back, we take a breather. The GA, I believe not in the pockets of chimney chimney he goes for the damage he understands that he is the sole carry for the comets right now and the eutectics they understand they know what to do they know where their damage needs to be placed but chimney chimney has just been you know perfect on this positioning right other than that e flash from zep from that tp he's been playing as perfect as you can get here Eutectics, they took game one in convincing fashion, but 32 minutes in, and the game's neck and neck. They are struggling, but Evrod is not. 
Good Zonius from Zarif, but a beast oh. is in a little bit of trouble. Chimney, Chimney though, he's able to auto attack on a target and get the speed up. They're gonna go one for one, but the rest of the Eutectics are too far away for this Jinx to do much more. These poppy hammers have been so, so crucial for them mm -hmm. to get the numbers advantage, to isolate somebody out, to get Chimney Chimney on the reset Look at the teleport. Here. Look at teleport the teleport. coming in. Look at where Zarif is. Brother, you need map quest? Google Maps? Are you lost? My friend! Turn, turn right at the Raptor camp as Evrod is in a little bit of trouble. He's going to die to a crit. And Chimney Chimney and the rest of the squad looking to Chimney! push forward. Rius has to try to get away desperately. He's auto attacking the ball. Flash apprehend. Shimmy, that should do it as the comments are looking to force game three. Zep, Minion. Minion wave in hand. He's got to clear it. The next closest member to come up is Jame right now. They've got to stall for 30 seconds here. Can they do it? I don't think so. That's far too long. Jarvan's been stopped. They're just going for the win. Chimney Chimney is like, you know what? Nah, no win. I'm trying to get more kills. Nexus exposed. Nexus is dead. Game three. Yeah, and I do love how both of their logos are also kind of like asteroids, right? Elho with the Eutectic, it's a flying face. I don't even know what that is. I don't even know what that logo is, but it's cool that it's flying towards me. The Comets, on the other hand, are just going to go with their standard bands, it looks like here. Zoe Listen. taking off the table. The Eutectics throwing Ezreal. I don't... There's no way they run this back. Listen, listen, you know, just to interrupt that for a second. Listen, it's the University of Health and Sciences and Pharmacy in St. Louis. It's just a pharmacist, right? This, you That's know just the guy that you see your local right aid. That's just the guy that you see your local right aid. You walk in, you walk in and you look right at the logo. You look right at the logo of University of Health and Sciences. That and guy, you go, can I pick up my prescription, might be please? hairier than me, bro. I don't know. I don't know, that guy might be hairier than me! Not that I'm discriminating. Hire anybody based off of their facial hair or bodily hair. I don't care. We don't we don't discriminate. Listen, if people but... didn't hire me off my facial hair, then we'd have a problem. We're getting a little scruffy myself. Fair enough here. But the Comets taking the LeBlanc, taking the Zoe. They're sticking the with same the same thing. bands here. You Texas as Lisa. well. Yeah, no. yeah. They're not switching it up. They're, they're, they're saying, you know what? Run that comp back, it looks like. They're going to take the Talio away. The Jinx yeah. has gotten through. The Jinx is... On the table, does UHP, UHSP they no take way it they, for themselves? There's no way they first pick Karma for the third time in the series. You're 1-1 on it if you're Zarif. You're saying I'm helping. Mantra E's were kind of crazy though, right? It oh, helps Chimney true. Chimney carry the game. Mantra E's were going Billy Bonkers here. He had a much better time uh, actually Nabisi on this champion. I mean, the Karma is essential whether you throw it in the mid lane or the support. And UHSP, they're just going to yoink that away. So you know what, Chimney? Play something else. Slide something over. Because this champion is mine now. Yeah, that's going to be a pretty big hit there. We'll see what Chimney Chimney is able to pull out. Oh, We're going to see the Volibear oh. again. I really like this pick out of Jamin game one. We're going to have to see what John elects to go here in the jungle. Because, you know, I'm sure he's got PTSD from that game one, right? Yeah, he's not going Kindred. Is the Varus... Comes out the callback, right? Game one and game two, you mentioned Chimney Chimney was on the Varus earlier this season, couldn't get it done, but had a damn good performance. I'm gonna assume it's gonna be on hit here, not as heavy carry power, but the lockdown coming in. Maybe the Viari comes in for Zarif and Johnny here, a little bit better, but still can be susceptible to those invades, especially from a volley bear. Yeah, um, you know, Volibear's early game just a little bit stronger than the Vise, so keep that in mind. We're going to see Jinx Leona, which is a very uncommon pairing, and Leona into a Varus Karma has the potential to go very wrong. That is a very interesting choice, but I do like the hard engage that it provides. I mean, it's not for the lane, right? It's, hey, hey. We're going to lock you guys down. Varus is immobile. You can get the ultimate going for the Leona. You can jump onto him with relative ease, I say, as they are going to remove the Darius here. The Karma still can be flexed into that mid lane, top, or the support. They haven't revealed where it's going just yet, but AD carry and jungle locked in. I expect the top lane pool to be pinched. I think the Comets are feeling a little bit more comfortable. He said, Evrot, you couldn't carry with the Syndra. Let's see what else you have in your back pocket, because right now we're feeling ourselves. Yeah, they take out his Jace this time around, which I find pretty interesting. You know, we hadn't 
We hadn't seen it at all. It was left available. This does mean that Oriana's open, and I really like Oriana with this composition. So, oh yeah, good to see if that's going to be the move here, or if he's going to go back to uh, the typical bread and butter. You know, Syndra is one of his favorites. Oh, nice call out there. Yeah, they're going to lock the Syndra. They're going to give counter pick actually over to Zep. Interestingly enough, it's not who I would have gave it to, but maybe they want Zep on something a little bit more impactful. The Gragist kind of had its highs and lows, right? He had a really good TP, but realistically, there wasn't Whoa. much you can do. And that's an Irelia being locked in for the Comets here. Still could go mid, could go top, and that is a real Irelia here. It's I Irelia. Gonna try to flex it. Way being locked in. I like that. Go for something okay. a little a little bit more range heavy. Allow yourself to kind of play the range game, the spells, everything like that coming up from Huey facilitates anti-dive. He can fear, he's got the slows. That is not real. No way is Zep locking in the 450 demon that is Trindamir. That's wild, but I really like it because, listen, take a look at the comet's composition, right? Yeah, Karma, Poke, Varus, Poke, Huey, Poke. You got some hard engage with Varus ultimate. You got Vi ultimate. You got Aurelia that can get in there. On the other side, the Eutectics, you know, they might get out team fought if that happens. Whoa. Trindamir. We just go Trindamir, bro. And we split oh. push. And we split push. And we split push. Um, Wait. May I, may I direct your attention to the top lane? No. Nah. Paul is going way top right no. now. No. Hey. They're going to send the Irelia into mid. Everot and Zep should lane swap here. Right? Like, I wouldn't... I don't want to play they Trindamir no into Huey. You know, that sounds awful. We'll see, we'll see what, what's going to go down here. It looks like they're not moving. So it appears the Eutectics just don't care. Yeah, I feel like Everot is at least decently confident in this matchup against Zarif, right? I mean, it is skill based right because once Zarif dashes in you can throw down the stun you can get the scatter of the week there and just kind of deny Zarif the engage here especially if he goes to ult and you have that ability to get the kill back in your favor Paul does have to play this carefully because it's not like Zep doesn't have kill windows and kill mm -hmm. opportunities right if he gets the slow if he pops the ghost he ease onto you if he gets close enough Paul doesn't really have a good way of getting you off of him other than the fear that you have to do with the think it is the QW, Paul's going to have to be on point with his abilities. I want to see how much of a lead. And actually, I lied. Everod is going to go into the top lane. Yeah. They are going to send the Trinimir into mid. I rally into Trin is a much, much easier matchup for Trin and also allows for kill windows like we mentioned. Shibi, I know you're talking about important stuff, but I was notified of what, of what the logo is for the Eutectics. What is it? It's it's their it's their mascot, Mortimer McPestle. He looks like a deep fried corn dog. Mortimer McPestle is a fire name, MM. I love it. M M McP actually. You know they call him they call him McP down there. Um, no, yeah, the dude. You know, not to not to rag on a um, you know a mascot, but he does kind of look like a deep fried corn dog. I'm not gonna lie. So. Uh, we'll we'll see Ooh. how uh, how these matchups go. We'll see if any of these champions get deep fried on the rift. You can already see that. Everyone has a nice CS lead, but you know he's just gonna try to listen. He's already conquered Zarif, right? Now he's got to conquer Paul. Yeah, he's just going through the elite four right now, and some of the trading power that Paul can do. You mentioned though in that bot lane. Look at the poke. Look at how much damage Reyes has already taken, and Persuasion just kind of has to watch as it happens because it is a Varus Karma lane. Right, you can't do much. You had your doubts about this Leona lane. I said it's not for the lane, it's for the pick potential later on. But unfortunately, Reyes is going to have to un take some damage, right? He's going to have to take the punishment that is this mantra cue, the the, the, the arrows coming out from the Varus. It's all going to add up over time and could lead to, lead to a potential dive here. As we do see Jame and Johnny both on the same side of the jungles mirroring each other right now. Yeah, if they want to make a play bottom lane, Jame is going to be the one to get there first, though, as Rius is just taking a lot of poke. 
Dr. Persuasion's taking a lot of poke. I mean, this is exactly what you were talking about earlier, what we expected. You got to be careful with a lane like this because if you let Chimney Chimney and Abisi run away with a CS lead, they're going to have impact when it comes to skirmishes later on. Yeah, especially with this Irelia, right? And the uh -oh. Vi, they want to get things one early. One Zep. Ghost for Flash. Zep, no teleport. Interesting to note. Double teleports on the Comets, so keep an eye Look on that. But yeah. See what James is going to try to do. Meanwhile, on the bottom lane, just more poke continuing to keep uh, the Eutectic bot lane down. Yeah, they're going to be const constantly shoved under their turret here. They don't really have a, a window to push out here unless James comes in for the gank. But look at Johnny. Look what he's doing. He's just there in the bush just in case James decides to take pay a visit here, supporting his bot lane, allowing them to play aggressively here. Has not resulted in any plates yet. But sooner or later, you'll see it'll go down to four, three, then two. As long as they're allowed to play this aggressively, and Johnny is here for the counter ganks, there's not really a whole lot this Eutectic bot lane can do right now. And I'm, I'm having my doubts about this Leona lane. Out of lane, they should be fine. But it's looking rough right now. 20, nearly 20 CS for Chimney right now. Yeah, and Johnny is still down here. Like, he's level three. Vi, you need to hit level six. Looks like they may want to go for a dive here. Who's going to take the first damage? Whoa. Zenith Blade. Oh, Whoa. Johnny's in trouble. Gets plenty of shielding. But Nabisi will be able to flash out. Will be able to tether. But it's a disaster on the bot lane for the Comets. A lot of time spent. A lot of summoner's bone. One, two flashes and a ghost coming out from the Comet side here. And with that knowledge, Chame is just going to be like, yum. Free grubs for yum. me. Yum. Yum. You think the things on the back of the grubs are edible? Little sacks back there? Edible they, sacks is not what I envision. I mean, no, it kind of looks like an They egg, might burst you know? like a gusher. They might burst Ooh, like a gusher. That, yum. that might be good. Purple flavor? Grape flavor? Grape mm. purple flavor. <laughs> I, Kool Aid red flavor. I, I I understand. I respect that. Yeah, I respect listen. that. But uh, now Zarif's got to respect three guys. Zarif's got no stun either. This is disaster. Zep, Zep is gonna go into undying Zep. rage. It's two for nothing. The Eutectics running him over early. You were wondering how the Void Mites tasted. Zep was wondering how Irelia and Vi tasted. He got a good chunk of them right now. Two. Kills for the Eutectics here. Zep gets two turret plates for himself here. This Trindomir is going to be scary later on. I don't know what Chimney does when his Trindomir is ghosting at you full steam ahead. He doesn't. He doesn't do anything. And I am curious as to why it looks like he's going toward on hit because I thought Poke might actually benefit them a little bit more. Uh, but, you know, that, that does remain to be seen. Listen, we've seen Chimney's Varus before. Sure that he's a far better various player than me, and that's not just because he's much higher elo than me. So <laughs> you know we'll, we'll have to wait and see. But you know Zep already getting a kill here. You, when you're an AD carry and you see that Trinmir gets a kill, you just wince internally. You just know that you're not gonna have a good time later on. Yeah, it's not gonna be fun, especially with Jame coming in off the top as well, right? Volley Trend is a very effective dive. You just gotta lock him down once and allow Zep to hit you. The saving graces though that Reyes is behind right now the cs lead is growing ever so much more for chimney right now and everyone should be fine here you mentioned this vine not level six spent too much time in the bot lane james been farming james been doing his duty here there was no dragon trade for the grubs they couldn't do it because they were so low so that's going to give full objective control at least for the first couple dragons in the grub here over to you tactics right they've got control right now well, Persuasion doesn't have a cue for the stun here. Jame is in the area, but they're not able to do much more. And this Leona is taking a whole lot of damage. You got to get him out of there. Uh, Going to go guys. down. It's another nice play here from the Comets. Able to make it happen in the bot lane. Chimney Chimney picks that up as well. And oh. Zarif is just going to die right now. Undying Rage gets popped. Zep, Zep hits him with the right hand of justice. And yeah, Trindomir flexing his muscles here. I talked about that's oh, I thought it wasn't mail. real. Yeah, that's a Warden's Mail on Irelia. He's giving oh. him a lot of his grief right now. Oh, this wait, is wait. a big problem. He sold oh, it. He's it's like, no, no longer I Warden's Mail. He's like, no, 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 no. Yeah, the voice is inside of his head. But, that, but that's just like, how no. desperate. 
how desperate Zarif is right now, like knowing that this is this is very problematic. 100% agree with Johnny is looking to try to get something done in this bot lane. He's playing like towards that. the lane that has the priority. Jame is here, though, for the counter gank. Let's see if Reyes and Persuasion can look tasty enough, right? As a bait. Are they enticing enough for a dive? Nope. They gave it away, right? You back off completely, and then you walk up again five seconds later. Swapped. You definitely tip your hat over, as Paul did lane swap like you mentioned. And I said Dragon should be in, col in control of the Eutectics, but with that bot lane kill, with Persuasion dying earlier on, you lose that objective control. And so you're not going to be able to get the Dragon. Uh-oh. 3v2 in the bot lane. Let's see if they can get out. Uh, Chains of Corruption is going to land flush. Rias is going to be able to at least get out of range, but Persuasion taking a lot of damage. Chimney's a little low on mana, and Jame going in. Flash, stun, Chimney is dead. Jame picks up the kill. Rias is looking for more misses out on the zap won't be able to continue the assault and i love jame using the volleyball ultimate to close the gap between him and chimney chimney gets the cue gets the stun like you mentioned kill goes into his pocket you'd love to see reyes get it but honestly relieving some of that pressure allowing him to kind of come back into this game is needed right now because chimney chimney and abisi have been doing a damn good job on this various karma flexing their muscles and oh, Ze paul. Oh, zep and paul. paul paul it's not zep and paul it's just all zep Paul does land the fear, but Zep will be able to get 300 more gold in his pocket. It's the Zep game. It's the Zep show, right? He said, he's like, we put me on Gragas. I wasn't allowed to do anything. Trindamir is much more my style. It's much more my carry potential. And he's putting full value into that pick right now. Mm -hmm. Three, zero, one, ten minutes in. He's got a lot of plays, take too. Yeah, and now that's going to give them control of these grubs. They're going to get six for themselves. Pushing power on a Trindamir, by the way? Yeah, yeah. I, he's going to be a menace in the side lane come 10, 15, 20 minutes in. Yeah, he's going to be a rise on the rise to the top. No lead in his Zeppelin. He's diving, by the way. He's getting another kill. Like, this is this is just ridiculous. Teleport coming down into the bottom lane. This is going to try to make a play on Darius. Chimney Everett? Chimney trying to get closer. Oh. Scout of the week. A nice dodge by Chimney Chimney. Counter teleport coming in. It's Zarif joining the party. Dr. Persuasion is going to get rooted up and going to get taken down. It's a third Everett kill dead. for Chimney Chimney. Now it's Everot who's going to get four man dove with Aurelia tanking oh. all the way. A triple kill for Chimney Chimney. That scatter of the week missing was so crucial for the comments to get these kills here. And Chimney Chimney picking up three. It's an arms race. It's Zep versus Chimney. Who can carry harder for each of their teams right now? Gold is evened up. It was 3,000 at one point, roughly, for Eutectics here. Chimney Chimney keeping them in the game. I like that. The call to dive Everot afterwards. The call to just get that dive going, especially with uh, Jane being on the other side of the map empower your best member he just had a crazy game right he's on a hot streak put him in the position to carry he's rewarded you once why wouldn't he be able to reward you again here chimney chimney looking to replicate his game two performance zep is two levels off on zarif this is not fair he's just Violet gonna die gonna come bro. over the wall stun is there i, I think you get 2v1 you just can't make this play especially with ultimate available in about what 15 20 seconds zep's gonna wait it out he doesn't need to dive he should know something's up, but he's just going to no, walk Zep. in. Yeah, Zep is going to get hit by the really ultimate. But Johnny realizing, I can't chase after that guy, man. That is bad news. <laughs> very, very bad news. Zep is a bad, bad man. Oh, man. He's going to go in again, and he's almost got his ultimate up. Look look where James is. Look, this is game one. This is a repeat of game one of Zep and James. Yep. This time around, Johnny's going to be able to secure all of his wolves, but... It's going to be forced out of that top side, and that's going to leave um, Everett on an island. Yeah, Paul had to get out of there. He was forced out. The ultimate was used, the unleashed power. They can fancy a dive right now. Look at where Jame is. They don't really know where he was at. I don't know if Paul actually suspects this. He's going through the jungle. Uh oh. Yeah, they know where he is. there by Jame, but yep, has been spotted out at this point. I mean, this just means the turret's essentially pretty free here. Jame is going to go all the way in, looking to do a lot to Paul here. Paul's got no summoners. Jame just chunks him out hard and says, I'm just going to get out of here and let Everot do the rest. Mid lane tier one goes down. Zep picks that up for himself. Zarif is trying to dance oh, around here. 
Rhys? The beastie gets engaged on. Vi is here. Dr. Persuasion down to about half HP. But Rhys, free hitting for now. Chimney is here. And the fight stops. So far, both of these teams putting uh, pressure onto the lanes that they think will carry, right? Johnny has been doing a good job on the combat side to keep Chimney Chimney empowered, to keep him in the game, to keep him ahead of Reyes. But Zep and Everard have kind of been allowed to run free along with Jame here, right? This top side for the Eutectics might just be enough to outcarry Chimney Chimney, who's not on the Jinx, on the Veras, a much harder champion to execute on because you don't have the resets available. You've got to put yourself in more dangerous positions, especially with your low mobility champion. You almost always have to have summoners up and available because Jame and Zep will just run you down. And Chibi, if they don't... Take him down and hold that thought as Jame is looking for a big engage. He gets rooted up. Everot is going to be the target. Lots of damage Ray's trying to come here. out here as the rest of the comments are here on Leash Power taking the Vi to about half HP. They're going to flash on top of the BC. Sarif oh. is Everot going to take him out. Sarif is going to be the next target. He flashes, but he's stunned and he's dead. Going back in is Vi, who goes down as well. A three for nothing in favor of the Eutectics. Jame oh, actually does. Actually. My yeah, bad. Jame actually does go down three for one, like you mentioned, but they're not oh, done. Ball? Persuasion? Oh, Chimney is able to get that kill, and Evrot can't look for more. Yeah, not turning towards that dragon that I thought they would go for. Instead, they want to go for more kills. Chimney Chimney picks another one up. He's 6-1-0. and zero. He's telling everybody to get in the backpack. This man's legs must hurt because he is just trying to hard carry his team right now. Hey, listen. The Chimney's got a strong foundation, Shibi. Let him cook. <laughs> Brick but by brick. One, yeah, one thing I wanted to point out is that if Chimney Chimney can stall this game out, I mean, Rias can just scale up, and then all of a sudden it's like, well, yeah, I fought through the Trinomir, I fought through the Syndra, but I can't, I can't fight through all three of them, right? So that'll be something to note as the comments are going to start up this dragon and secure dragon number two for themselves. Yep, because of that overstep or misplay from the Eutectics after that fight win, they lose priority. It's not their move anymore as we flash over to the gold right now. You look. Once again, Chimney Chimney, the singular strongest member in the game. Oh but God, the rest of his defense. boys are lacking. The rest of his boys are at 4,000 gold. Eutectics, Evrot, Jame, and Zep are all at 7,000 right now. They are just having themselves a field day. We mentioned the Eutectics topside. Is it strong enough to power through Chimney Chimney and Nabisi here? We haven't really seen a proper 5v5 team fight. That one we got in the river, Reyes was a little late and, you know, Comets had to kind of face check in. I don't know if it's going to go in the Comet's favor here, though. Because right now, you technically have, like you said, too many threats to kind of deal with. Well, Rift Herald looks like it's going to go over to the side of the Eutectics here. So um, they'll be able to try to make some good value out of that with their six grubs. Should be, this could be a very, very impactful Rift Herald. If they get a kill off of it as well, maybe a second charge. You might be looking at multiple turrets here. And the gold lead that really tips the balances in favor of the Eutectics. But it's already 3,000 in their favor, which isn't insurmountable by any means, right? We saw Chimney Chimney and the rest of the comments come back from what was 4,000 here. But Johnny used his Q, he's dead. Oh, yeah, this guy is just Super Mega Death Rocket was egregious there, as Everot <laughs> will be able to claim his fifth kill of the game. Really well played, and I loved oh. how the Eutectics. Goodbye. Have <laughs> just Zep gets a solo kill as we circle back. I love how the Eutectics have just been playing for these jungle picks, right? They've been using their power to kind of bully the comets out of their jungle, saying, you know Karma, what? You I don't think you of... want to do this. Ultimate's not available. Zep has flash. Oh, he's he might super be able to do low. it. The turret goes down. What are we looking at? He's getting chased down. Zep trying to get away and get shut down by Chimney Chimney. Exactly. Like he didn't want to get it. But look at all the grubs. Look at Twitch chat showing up to the party. Rift Herald will not get the second charge off. A lot of gold for the Eutectics here. We'll see if Vi wants to go in. They're going to target out Rez. He's trying to get out. But that means that Leona will give their life. Persuasion is the sacrificial lamb for the sins of the Eutectics here. But like you mentioned, all that pressure that Zep caused in that bottom lane, he got the tier one for himself. You see the Eutectics get mid tier two with that Herald, like you mentioned. Tier one also went down uh, earlier on. So a lot of the objective trade still going in the favor of the Eutectics here. And I don't think the Comets are going to be able to get too much more, right? They got to reset. 
They've got to cash in some of that gold, like you mentioned. The uh, shutdown going over in the favor of Chimney Chimney. I feel like he just has to try to stay ahead of the damage curve as much as possible, right? The longer you're on the map with that big bounty, that big gold lead you have on your singular character, you've got to put as much power as you can into it. You don't want to look back at one of these fights and be like, man, I had 2,000 gold to spend. If I was able to back and get that going, I would win these team fights. Yeah, it's the curse of playing 80 carry. You got 2,000 gold in your pocket, and you're like, oh, I can stay for one more fight. And then you're left wondering why you lost some LP. Not a personal <laughs> story, I promise. Uh, as the Comets are going to hang their hat on the sturdy hat rack, as we talked about. Chimney, Chimney, 7-1-1. One, one, highest CS in the game by a pretty solid margin. When you're out CSing, a split-pushing Trinomir, that's pretty big. Everyone has to flash away. Vi looking to get closer, but no nice. ultimate available. It's a good scout of the week. Yeah, no ultimate, like you mentioned. Cease and desist not available. And they're going to look for a counterplay here. They should know that it's coming, but Jay's oh, pretty fast. Oh, Vi just gets CC locked for days. It's another jungle pick for the side of the Eutectics. And Johnny's pathing has been uh, a bit suspicious this game, right? Like just walking into areas where he's not fully confident. You don't know where the rest of the team is. You don't know if the play is done. And he's died a couple times here, 0, 4, and 4. I mean, his job is just to press R onto the Jinx, get the lockdown going, and allow Zarif, Paul, and Chimney to kind of go to work with the space that he's created. But if he keeps dying early oh, on like this, James no. here, Zarif! Zarif has gone down. And that means the push going to come in on the bot side, Everot and James. I should have enough extra power with the little with the little grub -a dub dubs of the Twitch chat coming in to help them out as well. Able to potentially knock down this turret as Nabisi just can't do anything about it. Yep. That's a lot of gold, gold they just got. Oh, Paul. Tons of gold. And Zep is about to get himself a bag right now. There's Vi. Or maybe he doesn't because Chimney Chimney's here. Could flash away on Dying Rage Burn. Zep does so much damage, he can't stop the <laughs> Vi and Chimney Chimney. Kill number eight on the board. That was a near 1v3, right? If Johnny Almost. doesn't have flash, Paul has to flash. He got so much summoner spell value there. And with that, that chasm of pressure that Zep is creating, the rest of his team getting the objectives, getting the dragon here for themselves, they can just set Zep on an island and let him run free, right? Get him in the side lane, get two, three members on him, pick up barons, pick up towers here and there. That's what they should be realistically doing. Zep, I don't want to see him group until much later into the game. Yeah, we talked about how much pressure was he going to present in the side lanes, and like the great 21 Savage once said a lot. He has uh, forced Zarif to go 0-5. Uh, Paul is super far behind. He only has 115 CS in a 21-minute game. Guess what? Has to do a lot with Zep and Everot. It's been really difficult for the Comets to breathe, and they just said, hey, listen, they're comfortable letting Chimney Chimney beat them. It's it's rough because he's not on the Jinx, right? He's on the Varus. He's definitely fed. He's got the Terminus. He's three items in. But you look across the across the map, Evrot's working towards his third item. He can already blow up Chimney if he gets the Scatter of the Week into the combo with the Storm Surge. If Zep gets on you, if Jame gets on you, it's a done deal right now. Full sums available for himself. But instead, he's going to cause that pressure like you mentioned. Zarif can't handle him by himself. All the Eutectics have to do is wait for one more member to match Zep and then rip the Baron. They surely win a 4v3. Yeah, I mean, there's no question that they'll win a 4v3. Uh, they're just too far ahead. Even if Chimney Chimney's there, I mean, there's just too many strong members as... Nabisi is getting stunned up here and is in a lot of oh. trouble and is going to die to the Super Mega Death Rocket just getting caught out there as Jame is looking for a little bit more. Vi going to turn around and try to go in. Johnny? Get stunned, get stunned again. Is going to hold on top of the Syndra and is going to die all the same. Everot burning away but still alive for right now on the other side. Chimney, Chimney. Chimney is rifling away. Completely safe. Flashing forward, looking for more, and Zep is on the way. He's on top of the chimney, trying to clean him out and blow it up, but he gets CC'd away. But he flashes oh. on chimney, chimney, and closes out on the shutdown. Paul going to be the next target, and he gets blown up with help from Reyes, and they will clean up the rest of the comments. A double kill for Zep. The janitor is in town. His name is Zep. He's on cleanup duty. Yanni takes the fight. A lost one for you, Tactics, and flips it on its head. I said I didn't want to see him group. In that case, that was a very good back. That was a very good regroup with the team. I thought he'd be able to create some pressure. 
I didn't think the Eutectics would go for a fight like that. I didn't think they would try to force it and instead just Zep, let Zep push here. You saw the power of Chimney, Chimney though, right? He's able to rifle away. He's still able to carry with that Terminus, with that full build. He's opting in for that Wits End Fourth. Still dangerous territory for the Eutectics, don't get me wrong, but the Comets are slowly but surely losing this game right now. Yeah, Chimney Chimney was feeling himself. He flashed forward because he said, Trindamir's not here. And then he's like, Trindamir is here as the Baron. <laughs> Just getting ripped here by the Eutectics. Ping's coming out. We might have an idea that they're on it. Everod is on top of war, just trying to play goalkeeper. Johnny. He's doing a lot of damage into BC. Johnny is trying to come in from the side, but it's too little too late. And that means he is on the wrong side of the tracks. Can't get to the blast plant. It's more gold for Zep. Picking up another kill, taking advantage of Johnny. You have to try to go for that steal, right? I don't blame Johnny for no, that. No, no. You've got to try to do something there. Nabisi goes down. Nabisi's uh -oh. dead. He's one on away from death. Rias is on a killing spree. They do trade one for one. Is Chimney Chimney able to get the kill on the way out? Yeah, Zep has Baron. I should just expect him to side lane right now. Rest of the guys, Siege, Jane, Reyes, and uh, Evrod here. Uh, but instead, they might actually opt in for a cheeky 1-3-1, which also isn't bad here. You've got Baron on four members. You can wait for Persuasion to come up and run that 1-3-1. Although, right now, everybody's regrouping. Dragon's coming up in 50 seconds. The Comets, Comets are pushed back into their base, right? They can't really come into their jungle because of the pressure that Zep is putting on on this top side. And you look towards that bot lane or you look towards the bot side, Evrod is also there. They're kind of just shoved in and I don't know what the comments can really do. They need to kind of overload one side and hope that they can hold mid or bot or, or top and mid to themselves. Well, for right now, the Eutectics haven't really done much with their Baron. You know, the dragon's coming up in about 30 seconds. I mean, maybe they secure that, but, you know, this this top uh, inner turret's still standing. These inhibitor turrets are still standing. So the comets are totally fine with just chilling out right here, uh, but I'm sure the Eutectics are, are ready to hit the go button at a moment's notice. Yeah, mid and top pushing in their favor right now. Uh oh. Go button missed, Everot. but it's going to be Zarif who's the target, flashing away. Reyes is free hitting. They're going to get it on top of Everot, but look. Chimney's in trouble. He's stunned up. He is dead, and the rest of the team will fall apart with him. Zarif is one auto away from getting blown up. Reyes decided to let him live and said, you can tell the story of how you got run off the rift to all your friends, but you can join the rest of your friends. As Zep said, I want three kills in the pocket, and this game? will be the game and the series should be the Eutectics after a really tough game two where they lost. Look pretty clean here in game three, and they're moving on the NECC Champions Playoffs. Zep, the jack of all trades, will play the Gragas, will play the Olaf, and will give you a carry performance on the Trindamir. The man, the myth, the legend just absolutely pops off here. They steal the Jinx away. They force Chimney onto something else.